Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Prodigy channel and we have another video today where I'm going to be setting my lineups across my four fantasy leagues heading into week two of the 2021 NFL season. Uh, we've got redraft, dynasty, auction, snake draft leagues. We have one quarterback, two quarterback, non-PPR, half PPR. We got everything. So with that being said, uh, if you guys don't know what these videos are, again, like I said at the beginning, it's literally just me setting my lineup so you can uh, see what, what decisions I'm making this week. And I'm going to give you a couple tips as well to kind of help you set your lineup. So I'm going to recap last week really quickly here. So in this league, I got destroyed. Um, I, I'm not going to spend too much time on the recaps, but as you can see, Tom Brady had a good game. Montgomery had a good game. Other than that, Henry really really hurt me on the bench antonio brown and debo samuel went crazy so it was good to see them do well but they were on my bench so that sucked and then transaction wise i added adam Troutman for zero dollars dropped justin fields for him and i picked up tim patrick and dropped russell gage if tim patrick is still on your waiver wire i highly recommend picking him up uh wide receiver for the denver broncos uh jerry judy who was one of their top two wide receivers just got placed on injured reserve. He's going to be out for a while. So Tim Patrick should fill that wide receiver two role. And with that being said, now it is time to uh, set this lineup here for week two. So Tom Brady's a lock. Derrick Henry's a lock. Montgomery's a lock. DJ Moore, Calvin Ridley. Those look like they're going to be locks. I'm putting Adam Troutman in there over Zach Ertz. I played Ertz last week. Apparently he's dealing with a little hamstring injury. It uh, doesn't look like the questionable tag is there anymore. So he might actually... He does not have an injury des designation, but I'm still going to take Adam Troutman. I always think that Troutman could have a good game, um, whereas Zach Ertz, he could, but it, it's been rough for him lately. But we'll, we'll see. Neither play excites me, but um, that's enough talking about those two. Now I have to decide between Antonio Brown and Debo Samuel. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to go with Antonio Brown. As of now, if I do make the change to Debo Samuel, I will comment it down below um but as of right now i'm thinking i'm gonna go with a b i just i like the matchup with atlanta i like the chemistry that he showed with tom brady last week against the cowboys and i do have tom brady as my starting quarterback so i kind of like that stack right there and Debo samuel's a good player had a great week one but the 49ers you never know what they're gonna do i feel like they could involve iuk more than they did in week one and maybe uh Debo takes a little bit of a back seat but we'll see um but for now i'm gonna go with antonio brown and this is our matchup, actually. And like I said, with that uncertainty, the guy that I'm playing already had one player go. It was the uh, Washington football team defense, and they only scored three points. So normally I try to get these recorded before Thursday Night Football, but um, I had kind of a weird busy week, so I wasn't able to do it until uh, Saturday morning. So yeah, so this is our matchup anyway. So he's got Christian Kirk in the flex. Uh, Williams is questionable. And, you know, he's got a couple of weak spots on his team. So I feel like I'm going to go with a safer option with... Uh, Antonio Brown I don't want to take the risk with any 49ers uh you know buffoonery who knows what's going to happen there but I I do like Debo Samuel this week he, he I made a start of the week video he's one of my starts of the week but so is Antonio Brown I'm just going to go with the security I know that AB is going to have a role so moving on oh by the way this was a non-PPR league this is a 12 12 team right 12 team non-PPR almost forgot to say that now we have a two quarterback half PPR league so let's actually recap last week here we'll go to week one and as you can see we dominated in week one i had the most points of the league uh in this was a uh redraft league or a um yeah this is a redraft the previous one was a redraft and they were both snake drafts so in this draft i got a lot of quarterbacks um really late i got like mahomes and josh allen in like the second and third rounds or third and fourth or it was something crazy because i feel like the rest of the league wasn't aware that in a two quarterback league you want to take quarterbacks earlier so our quarterbacks are stacked and i mean there's not much to say a lot this team really just showed out most got hurt so that's something we're gonna have to account for this week and you'll see that that does kind of hurt us in that flex spot this week mahomes did great josh allen did okay dalvin cook had a great game yeah so tyler lockett went off so did a b hawkinson had a great game so yeah we have a lot of bright spots on this team um, as far as uh, transactions, we'll go to recent activity, and then I'll just go to my team right here, the Albuquerque Heisenberg. So I added Latavius Murray, and I dropped Russell Gage and picked up the Browns head coach because we have head coaches and punters in this league. It's just a free, fun league, but um, I kind of like the Browns against Houston. I think they'll destroy them, and I do have the Chiefs head coach as well, but they're playing Baltimore, so that could be a close game. 
So in this league, it's pretty simple. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, those are locked in. And notice how I have Patrick Mahomes in my uh, more flexible position, whereas I have Josh Allen in the quarterback locked spot because he plays earlier. Uh, Patrick Mahomes plays later. So if I want to make a change later in the day, I can I have more flexibility. Um, running back, we got Dalvin Cook, Damian Harris. I like Damian Harris. He showed he had a lot of volume last week. He did have a crucial fumble late in the game. So we'll, we'll have to monitor how Bill Belichick handles that. Hopefully he doesn't reduce his workload like crazy or anything. And I'm not scared of the Jets. And I don't have any better options. So we're going with Damian Harris. But Dalvin Cook obviously is a lock against Arizona. Calvin Ridley against Tampa Bay. I'm hoping for the bounce back. I want the Falcons offense to look a little better. And I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball against Tampa Bay. So Calvin Ridley needs to be involved. And hopefully he can just catch a touchdown or do something. Because last week was pretty ugly. Tyler Lockett against Tennessee. I mean, great week one. Great player. I'm putting him in there. Antonio Brown. Uh, same thing as the other league. I really like Antonio Brown. The only one of the reasons I might go with Debo in the other league, and like I said, if I do, I'll put it down in the comments, is because I have Antonio Brown in this league, and sometimes I kind of like to mix up the players I get exposure to. But that you know, it's really close between those two. TJ Hawkinson had a great week, uh, week one. Uh, he broke out last year, and it looks like he is maybe on pace to have an even bigger breakout this year. So that's why I took him. Mike Davis at Tampa Bay. Now, in my start and sits of the week video. Mike Davis was one of my sit -ums. It's actually a stardom sit video. Um, he was one of my sit because Tampa Bay has a great run defense. The Falcons offense didn't look good in week one against Philly. I'm not sure how they're going to they're gonna look against a worse matchup in Tampa Bay. Super Bowl champions on the road. But I have really no other options. Ronald Jones is risky. He fumbled in week one and didn't see the field after that. Scored negative points. Devontae Parker, eh, not really feeling that. Mooney, no. Latavius Murray. I want to see a little bit more from Mooney before I, I decide to put him in over Mike Davis. So even though Mike Davis was a sit -em for me, sometimes the situation makes it so you have to play, play a guy like that. Whereas in this league, I have Debo Samuel and um, Debo and Antonio Brown to decide between in the flex. So I can afford to sit Mike Davis in that league. But in this league, I don't like my other options. So now we are going to move on to the next league. And I don't know if I mentioned this. This is a half PPR league. Uh, this league is also a half PPR league as well. And we already had Sterling Shepard go on Thursday Night Football. In fact, let me go to the recent activity. And I'll show you my recent transactions here. So after week one, we made a couple changes because this is an auction draft two quarterback league. So in the auction draft, I went really top heavy, but my depth was horrible. So... Uh, J.D. McKissick, after week one, I dropped him. I picked up Tony Jones, honestly. After seeing what J.D. McKissick did in week two, I kind of wish I would have kept him. He had 17.8 points. He he was really involved as a uh, passing downs back and a uh, like the two-minute drill, uh, third down type of role. So hopefully I can get him back, but I don't want to overpay for him. I don't know why I, honestly, why I added Tony Jones and dropped him. But Tony Jones is the RB2 in um, New Orleans, so I thought maybe he has some upside if something happens to... Uh, um, Alvin Kamara and JD McKissick only had one touch in week one. So uh, that was tough to see though, but we'll, we'll see what happens. It's not, it's not a super big deal. And we also added Sterling Shepard. We dropped Russell Gage, who did he even have a, did he do anything? He had zero points. He had zero points last week. So, you know, hopefully he doesn't go out and have a great game now that I dropped him. But I added him for 26 out of 200 fab dollars. And he had another great week. Uh, across two weeks, actually, he's had... 19 targets total so sterling shepherd if he's on your waiver wire i would recommend adding him and then we got added tim patrick dropped tony pollard um like i said earlier tim patrick should be the wide receiver two in denver hopefully teddy can get him the ball and speaking of tim patrick i currently have him in my flex we'll get to that in a second but right now my quarterback options obviously kyler murray is locked in there and i was really deciding between teddy bridgewater zach wilson and jared goff zach wilson against new england um, that's not a good matchup and he's a rookie. He, he got some garbage time points last week, but I want to see a little more consistency. And I, before I, you know, I don't feel super safe playing Zach Wilson against the new England Patriots. Um, I feel a little bit better about playing Teddy Bridgewater in a great matchup against Jacksonville that made the Houston Texans look like Super Bowl contenders. Um, and Jared Goff, I mean, kind of the same as Wilson. He put up a lot of points sort of in garbage time. He almost actually brought him all the way back against the 49ers in week one, but against green Bay, I think they're going to come out. I think the Packers are going to come out and really try to stick it to the Lions after an ugly week one performance against the Saints. So I really don't want any part of that. So we're going with Teddy right now. Um, Aaron Jones, 
James Robinson is two of my running backs, Devontae Adams, DJ Moore. And in the flex, we have Tim Patrick. Now, I was really deciding between him and Naheem Hines, and this is a really tough decision. Um, I really like the matchup with Jacksonville. I like Tim Patrick's increased role. Um, I, I am stacking him with Teddy Bridgewater. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. A stack with Teddy Bridgewater and the Denver Broncos wide receiver too. That is not Cortland Sutton or Jerry Judy, but it's such a good matchup. This is a decision I might change, but I feel like Tim Patrick has a good chance of having a solid game and he could have a great game. Whereas Naheem Hines against the LA Rams who have a pretty solid defense. I know Montgomery ran through them a little bit in week one, but the Rams do have a good defense. I could see a case where the Colts can't really get anything going with their wide receivers and do a bunch of dump offs to Naheem Hines, but Hines has had shown a little inconsistency in the past in the past. So I want to see another week of him performing solidly uh, before I go ahead and uh, put him in my flex. So this is our lineup right now. And I hope you guys notice this. I was testing you. I, I say this in all these videos, you want to have the later players in the flex spot. So Tim Patrick plays at noon. Devonta Adams plays on Monday night. So I'm going to make that switch. So if I, so let's just say after the noon game, um, I need some, or I guess before the Monday night game, if I need someone to play, if he's in my, if Devonta Adams was in my wide receiver spot, I could only replace him with a wide receiver. Uh, but since if he's in my flex, I can put a wide receiver flex or even a tight end in there if I'm desperate. So that's kind of my thinking there. Um, although all my players do appear to be playing at noon anyways. So um, the, you, you get the point. Um, I did forget to do a recap of the previous week, actually. So we did lose in this league as well. So um, I'll just look at the box score here. It was a close matchup, but uh, Kyler Murray went crazy. Aaron Jones and I mean, bro, I lost by like nine points in a week where Aaron Jones and Devonta Adams had like the worst weeks ever. And I started Russell Gage who had zero. So it's rough. Kyler Murray had a fantastic week. James Robinson. I'm a little worried about his workload. In fact, I am starting him this week. I should mention this. I am starting him in this league, but I'm going to be sitting him in the next league that I'm talking about just because of the options I have. Like I said, my depth in this league is not very good. So I'm kind of stuck playing James Robinson. Hopefully uh, he's a little more involved this week in week two. But yeah, Kelsey had a great week. Rager got in the end zone. On the bench, Goff put up numbers. If I would have played him over Zach Wilson, dang, that sucks. Um, but yeah, enough talking about this league. Now we're on to the final league. This is a dynasty league. So I, don't, I've, I, I keep forgetting if, I, if I'm saying this, but this league that we are just talking about a little bit ago, half PPR, two quarterback, yeah. Um, and then this is a dynasty league, uh, half PPR, one quarterback. We got three wide receivers, two flexes because we got deep benches. So as of now, I got Tom Brady as my starting quarterback. So I'm starting him in two leagues. I love him this week against Atlanta. I like the whole Tampa Bay offense in general outside of the running backs. But Ronald Jones or Fournette, I could see one of them having a good game. It's hard to predict who, um, but it's hard to know what Bruce Arians is going to do in that backfield this week. But we'll see. Uh, Joe Mixon, Jonathan Taylor, those guys are locks. Miles Sanders, I am playing. He had a nice week one. We'll take a look at his numbers from week one against Atlanta. 15 carries. Five targets, caught four of them for 39 yards, 74 rushing yards. He didn't get the end zone, and I'm so, and I'm happy with that uh, performance. So he's he has struggled with inconsistency in the past. So I just want to see that volume be there consistently, like every game. And he'll be a solid, solid RB3 uh, player for my team. And we got DeAndre Hopkins, Chris Godwin, Calvin Ridley. Those guys are locked. DeAndre Hopkins, one of the best receivers in the league. He blew up in week one, had two receiving touchdowns. Um, he gets to play by Minnesota Vikings. Sadly, that matchup does not scare me. So playing him, Chris Godwin, great matchup with Atlanta. Great player, great offense, had a great week one. Calvin Ridley, I'm expecting a bounce back. If not, I'm going to be a little bit worried because I did draft him in this first league we went over. I drafted Calvin Ridley over Joe Mixon and uh, DeAndre Hopkins. So I'm a big Calvin Ridley guy, so I'm hoping. Now, and George Kittle at tight end. Chicago Bears defense against Cincinnati instead of the LA Chargers against Dallas. Remember, this is a dynasty league, so waiver wire is dry. There's no defenses on there. Um, the only real decision I'm making in this league is this flex spot. So originally, last week, I played James Robinson, and I can show you last week's uh, box score as well. So as you can see, we did win pretty... Oh, wait, this is this week. Hold on. Week one. So we won pretty easily. Um, we had the second most points in the league. Um, my opponent actually had a lot of points too, but unfortunately it wasn't enough because he came up against a juggernaut. Uh, you can see the matchup here. Um, a lot of players on my team did really well. I don't need to go over it. 
I mean, you guys can see it, right? Like Hopkins, Godwin, Kittle. I mean, Kittle had a decent game, really kind of didn't have a great game, but that's okay. I think they'll get better. Taylor, Mixon had great games. Sanders, Tom Brady went off. So James Robinson, though, he's starting to worry me. So in this league, I am sitting him as I'm scrolling through the bench here quick in case you want to see anything. Mark Ingram, we somehow had on our team. I picked him up off the waiver wire in the offseason. He had a great game. He's definitely a... I actually did... I did trade him. I'll talk about that in a second, but um, where am I? Where am I? So, yeah, okay. So I'm trying to decide this flex spot. So right now I got Mike Williams. Um, I'm deciding between him, James Robinson, Ronald Jones you could throw in there. It's a good matchup, but I'm not going to play him as for reasons I've mentioned already. Marvin Jones I don't hate, but I don't like him as much as some of my other options. We've got Chase Claypool, Cortland Sutton. So Sutton, I want to see him have a good game. Coming back from that injury, I want to see him get heavily targeted uh, before I put him into my lineup over some of the guys that I have. Um, if, I had a, if I had a weaker team, I could consider playing him. But uh, Chase Claypool against Vegas. So after, after looking at all these options, oh, I forgot to say Mike Davis as well. So I'm not playing him against Tampa Bay. Horrible matchup. I'm playing him in one league, and I don't even like that. James Robinson, he, I mean, I'm talking about his volume. I'll just show you. He had five carries for 25 yards. He did have six targets, caught three of them for 29, which is good. But, yeah, I want to see him get right before I put him into my lineup over Mike Williams or uh, Chase Claypool. So I'm really deciding between Claypool and Mike Williams. Um, here's a box score for uh, Claypool. He had a carry for 25 yards. Five targets, caught three of them for 45 yards. So not the target number is not really great. I don't love that. Their offense didn't look amazing. The Steelers offense, that is. Mike Williams, who, let's be honest, he's not the most consistent player, but after week one, where he got 12 targets, caught eight of them for 82 yards and a touchdown, I really like that. I could totally see him having a bust game. I could see him uh, getting hurt. He tends to leave games with injury early a lot. But I could see him having a nuclear game. I could also see Chase Claypool having a crazy game against Las Vegas. They both have good matchups. Mike Williams against Dallas, who just got lit up by Tampa Bay. Chase Claypool against uh, the Las Vegas Raiders, who were in a high-scoring game with the Baltimore Ravens in Week 1. Uh, Chase Claypool is the bigger name, but I just like how Mike Williams, he's the second target in uh, for the uh, LA Chargers, whereas Chase Claypool... He is sort of, I mean, it's him, Deontay Johnson, Juju. They got Najee Harris in the backfield. I mean, Claypool is probably the two there, but oh man, that's really tough. I think as of now, I am going to go with Mike Williams. I'll comment it down below if I change it, but right now my gut is saying Mike Williams. I could totally see either of these players having multi-touchdown games. They both have the ability to do that. And Honestly, I'll probably pick the wrong one, but I'm going with Mike Williams. Um, so, yeah, we, we we set all of our lineups, and I did forget to mention um, my transactions in this league this week. So I will go over that briefly here. So I did make a big trade where I um, – so I forgot to mention this previously, but in a different video. But we did trade Brashad Perriman for a fourth. I was going to drop him, so I just was able to get a fourth out of him before I dropped him. Um and someone sent me a trade offer, Mark Ingram. I sent away Mark Ingram for T.Y. Hilton and Ronald Jones. Um, I might make a video where I talk about this more um, ex exclusively, like just this trade, because I don't want to get too into it right now. But to me, Mark Ingram, he's he's an aging running back on a bad team. That's probably the he had 26 carries in week one. I don't expect him to have that many carries again. I don't even expect the Texans to be in a game script where they can run the ball that much. T.Y. Hilton, he's at the end of his career. He's injured right now. Uh, but I'm trading away Mark Ingram, so that's fine. If he comes back, he can be someone that in an emergency I can play. And then Ronald Jones, to me, he's sort of a mystery box. He's shown Last year, he was an RB2. He's shown upside, uh, but he's also shown that sometimes he struggles to hold on the ball. Sometimes he struggles just to play well, and he has shown that he can get benched any given week if he fumbles. So there's a risk with him, but he's young. He's got a lot more upside and uh, in terms of just his career than Mark Ingram does at this point. So I did make that trade. And then I also cut Darrington Evans off of IR to make room on my injured reserve for T.Y. Hilton. And I cut Boston Scott, who looks to be the RB3 in Philly. And I picked up Samaj P. Ryan to handcuff uh, Joe Mixon. And I picked up Matt Breida, who after week one, looks to possibly be the RB2 in Buffalo over Zach Moss. Zach Moss was, I believe, a healthy scratch. So, um, yeah, so these these are all the lineups. This is half PPR, one quarterback. I think I said that. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you get some sort of uh, insight into what I'm thinking by these videos. I kind of just like to make these videos because I'm setting my lineups anyways. So I thought I might as well record myself doing it. Uh, so yeah, we, we had a few tough decisions in there. Mike Williams or Claypool. Also, uh, we got Antonio Brown versus Debo Samuel. And what was the other one? Oh, it was Naheem Hines versus uh, Tim Patrick. So um, you can see who I went with if you watch the video. Comment down below if you think I made the right decision, if you think I should switch anyone. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Talk to you guys later. Peace out.